Welcome to another segment of Your Health Matters here on WKXL 1450 AM. This program can be heard at 2 p.m. every weekday afternoon. You may also hear this program anytime by going to our website at WKXL 1450 for an MP3 version of Your Health Matters under the program archives. WKXL is hometown radio serving Concord and the Capital Region. I'm your host, Kat Murphy, and today we're going to be talking with our friends, Denise Bruitt, who is the Executive Director of the Council for Children and Adolescents with Chronic Health Conditions and Their Families, and also Susan Avard, registered nurse with New England Home Therapies in Concord, specializing in oxygen, respiratory equipment, and durable durable medical home equipment to assist patients with home care. And ladies, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Kat. Thanks for having us back. You're Kat. welcome. We're glad to have you back. So I want to talk a little bit, um, ladies, first. I know that you were on with us last week, and we talked about sort of uh, the council for children with adolescent and chronic, excuse me, adolescent and chronic health conditions. And we also talked a bit about what chronic disease is. And I'd like to sort of review those things first um, for anybody who didn't happen to catch the show last week. Um, and because it's going to lead into some of the things we're going to be talking about today, um, about chronic diseases, uh, allergies, mm-hmm. asthma, since summer is, is here. Next Friday is the first day of summer. Um, and summer camps as well for kids. Um, so could you give me, um, Denise, uh, sort of an overview of what is the Council um, for Chronic Health? Oh, I would be happy to do that. The Council is a statewide agency that serves as an advocacy organization for children and families who contend with chronic health conditions. And uh, we work with uh, Health and Human Services, excuse, excuse me, Health and Human Services, the Department of Education, the Insurance Department, uh, all of our local schools, state and local agencies who come in contact with uh, children and families who deal or contend with chronic health conditions. Uh, we work very closely with the New Hampshire legislature uh, to look at different legislative issues that need to be passed or amended to uh, help families uh, who are dealing with these issues. Great. Um, And I apologize, it's Suzanne Avard. I called her Susan because that's what I want to call her. (laughs) Um, And you are today representing New England Home Therapies. Yes, I am. Um, And I know that you, in that capacity, also deal with some chronic health conditions as well. Um, Certainly, I would think something like asthma would be one of them. We do a lot um, with, we work with a lot of hospitals, doctors, um, pulmonologists are big. We have a lot of kids that do have asthma that will have nebulizer treatments, Um, obviously oxygen and other equipment for the more chronic health conditions. I mean, asthma is a chronic health condition. And let's just review again what a chronic health condition is. That would be great. Um, It's a, it's. It covers a wide variety of diagnoses, and it, they range from anywhere from asthma to allergies, diabetes, um, neuromuscular disorders, spina bifida. Um, and a chronic condition is something that it's not curable. It's treatable, and we can get it to be um, so that they can ha- maintain a good quality of life as long as we, you know, you stay on top of the treatment for the chronic condition. So there's there's a lot of chronic conditions out there that the council helps families with all over the state of New Hampshire. And um, just to remind some of our listeners who might have heard last week or to introduce it to some of our listeners, um, all three of us happen to have some personal experience um, with chronic disease. Um, My son uh, was diagnosed with asthma at seven months um, after a severe bout of pneumonia. Um, I have asthma, and I know that both of your children also have chronic diseases, and I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about what you've experienced with your son, Ryan, um, and with your daughter as well, who I apologize, whose name I don't think we ever brought up last time. Chantel. Chantel, beautiful name. Um, So Denise, could you tell us a little bit about Ryan? Sure, Ryan is our youngest child. Uh, He's six years old, and he has a condition called cutaneo visceral angiomatosis with thrombocytopenia. He is currently one of 10 diagnosed cases in the world. His condition involves uh, vascular tumors that are in his uh, major organs. He has one that's on. He has one tumor that's on his skin that looks like a bruise that we call Bob. Um, and that's right on his nose, right? It's right on right, his yeah. nose. If you had to have a tumor on your face, probably the worst <laughs> place you could have one. Um, so it's right on the bridge of his nose, and we decided to give it an identity since it's very. Uh, it's in a focal point of his, Mm -hmm. you know, main part of his face. Um, But Ryan, uh, due to his condition, deals with 
uh, osteopenia from his treatment, which is brittle bones, uh, high blood pressure from the steroids that he has been on. Uh, and his condition currently is in a remission state. Thank, thank goodness. Uh, we've been very successful in his treatment. Uh, and very, very much similar to other children who have chronic health conditions. It can be a road that has highs and lows. And right now we're in a very nice spot with Ryan. Um, there is no cure for it. So it's kind of sits on your shoulder and we're hoping that it stays quiet. But at any time our life can, you know, kind of be, can be turned upside down and those tumors can start to bleed and we'll have to you know, kick up the chemotherapy and the heavy duty drugs to get them under control. He's doing extremely, he's doing extremely well. He has rebounded and has regained his mobility. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the tumors were growing in his bone marrow. And as I said before, he became very osteopenic and weak and uh, developed some neuropathy. And right now he's, he's getting better. He's mending mm -hmm. and his the, we're able to take a break from all of his medications, which is a huge part of it. And now we're in the cleanup phase and getting him back to being strong. Hmm. That's quite a story for a six-year-old boy. Mm, he's, um, <laughs> he's a strong six-year-old, though. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I, I think all of these kids are, are strong. I, I mentioned last time, and I, I still think that I wish I had half the willpower that these kids have to get through some of these things. Um, and Suzanne. What what um what is Chantel dealing with? My daughter's growth hormone deficient, so we have specialists that we see every three months. She does get an injection every night. It is a growth hormone, um, but of course we're forcing her body to grow, which then can impact other um, systems. We have to watch to make sure we're not having diabetes induced from having the injection. So it's, you know, it's a hard course for her. She's 11 years old and looks like she's seven. Mm. So everybody, you know, thinks that, yeah, she's cute and she's tiny, but that's very frustrating for a child who's 11 and wants to be treated differently. Right. So, you know, every chronic condition has its ups and downs. Some are a little bit more debilitating as far as Ryan has gone through so much um, that I couldn't even imagine. So it's, you know, everybody's out there, they have their diagnosis, and we just have to treat it and have everybody treated for their disease process and give them the care that they need. I, I think one of the, um, the interesting things to mention here is um, the, your daughter who is growth hormone deficient. That's a, a, a known chronic disease um, with Ryan, I know you mentioned he is one in 10 that has been diagnosed with this disease. He was actually the very first person to be diagnosed. He was, yes. And I, I think it's important for people to know that, um, you know, that the council exists for many reasons. But one of them is not only is there a, a huge existence of chronic health conditions that are on the rise, not only in the state, but, you know, in the entire nation. But there are ones we don't even know exist yet. And we don't know they exist until somebody like Ryan comes along. And it's a whole new path that has to be explored. It definitely is. I mean, I think that what, unfortunately, in New Hampshire, the numbers are much, I think, are much larger than people realize. One in six children in New Hampshire contend with a chronic health condition. So if you think of that, I mean, it's that's either yourself or, I mean, someone in your house, your children, or your neighbor to your left or your neighbor to your right. You know, the statistics show that someone, you know, with who is very close to you is dealing with a chronic health condition in a child. And there are all sorts of different levels. I mean, we're when we the, the chronic health conditions that the council deals with range from asthma to food allergies to cancer, cancer, uh, diabetes, hemophilia, uh, spina bifida, muscular dystrophy. So there is quite a range, but the all these families are dealing with the issue at hand. So mm -hmm. they're, I mean, but they, and they all want the same thing for their children. There's right. not, it, it doesn't matter if your child has a health condition or not. Your goal for your child is that they will succeed, be happy and healthy. And it doesn't change whether or not they have a chronic health condition or not.